Have yourself a very Merry Christmas and a Vendetta New Year. What? What is this? Resident Evil Vendetta is the third 3D animated Resident Evil movie, and like the previous two, I liked it for the most part, but it has its fair share of doofy and confusing moments. So, like the other CG movies, Vendetta is a side story that takes place within the Resident Evil games universe, which overall is a good thing. However, what's not quite so nice about this is they tend to kind of throw you into the deep end of the rather complex Resident Evil storyline, so it's not very open to more casual viewers. It's nice that these movies expand upon the established Resident Evil lore, but I feel like there's a way to do that without losing most people not as familiar with the game's storyline. I wouldn't want them to have to stop dead to explain everything, but there's definitely a middle ground between that and leaving you confused about, like, the Tenth Umbrella wannabe company. Vendetta takes place in between Resident Evil 6 and 7, featuring Leon Kennedy once again as he is in the other two CG movies. However, we also get Chris Redfield and Rebecca Chambers for the first time in one of these movies. I was definitely more interested to see what they're doing with Rebecca at this point, since the series doesn't revisit her nearly as often. And Chris, unfortunately, has become a bit less interesting when his personality is basically turned into Mr. Military Action BSAA dude. I don't hate Chris Redfield, but I wish he'd do a bit more than usually leading a special ops team with guns blazing all the time. When I was a kid, I used to think about the kind of man I'd grow up to be. I always thought on my first day as a cop I'd deal with a zombie apocalypse, then be a special agent that deals with bioorganic weapons all over the world. So, I nailed it. Leon then decides to remake the Resident Evil Remake's opening. Real remakeception or something. I never thought my life would turn out this way. So, no one told you life was gonna be this way? Anyway, after Leon's little addition for Out of the Edge 2, we go over to Chris Redfield and you'll never guess what he's doing! He's leading a special ops team on a mission! I can't believe... Chris and friends are in Mexico to do the Mexican remake of Resident Evil 1, I guess, as they're heading off to a spooky mansion out in the middle of nowhere. This, honestly, is a part I really like them doing in this movie, as actual spooky horror moments have been few and far between in these CG movies. And all of the Resident Evil movies, really, for that matter. But, unfortunately, this mansion only ends up being the first act of the movie, so it only lasts about 17 minutes. This causes them to really speed through this plot, much like how they did the Arkley Mansion in Welcome to Raccoon City. So you're Chris Redfield, the big hero. There's corporations out there creating viruses. There'll come a day we'll be faced with a decision. Punch a boulder, or don't punch a boulder. Sorry. Sorry I ever met you, Chris. Anyway, Corporal Deadmeat's apology isn't enough, so he's not surviving the first act here. Chris and crew's mission is to try and take out the main villain of the movie, Glenn Arias, and rescue their undercover agent, Kathy White. Who loved taking her stupid son, Zack, on her dangerous undercover missions with her. And I'm sure they're gonna be real characters and not already zombies by the time we see them. Look, Chris! No! Am I stuck in a damn time loop? What? I love how similar this mansion is to the Arkley Mansion from the first game, with a staircase in the main hall that splits off to the left and right. And what was the next room they went into right after that? A dining room. Serve me up some of that Chris's blood sandwich and all that. 
Ugh, but now that there's rusty utensils, guess after buying this mansion, they couldn't afford decent silverware. When the BSAA are able to easily get through all the rooms of this mansion without having to solve puzzles and unlock doors with crests or strangely themed keys, I really have to question if this is truly Resident Evil anymore. Do you hear the grudge coming in right behind us? Nah, <laughs> ignore it. I love being bad at my job. Speaking of being bad at their jobs, these twits know they're heading into a situation with potential B.O.W.s, which means zombies are very likely. So what do they do when they encounter the very obviously zombied up Zack? They let him get all nice and close and ask, Are you okay? Are you okay? Are you okay? And they die! Gee, if only they were briefed about B.O.W.s. Oh yeah, they were. By the time Chris and friends enter the room, Zombie Zack has apparently very quickly turned all of the soldiers and convinced them to hide under the bed with him for some hilarious zombie pranks. Zack? <laughs> yeah? So, the mission is a rousing success as Chris loses his entire team. The only two that manage to escape the zombies end up running straight into razor wire, which is a little too reminiscent of the damn lasers from the Resident Alice saga. Really impressed though that Arius knew booby trapping this one hallway would be worth his while. <laughs> Oh, oh, quick time event! Press up, press up! There he is. Fight! Ah, looks like Arius is really Little Wesker Jr. Gonna cry? Bitch slapality! Arius keeps pulling out the super Wesker-like moves as he fights during this movie, which would seem to indicate he does have some kind of virus enhancement like Wesker, but we never get a clear answer on this. Even the Resident Evil wiki isn't sure if he's had any mutation enhancement, so he just fights like this somehow. Oh, my back! My back! I make good products available to anyone who wants to buy and at reasonable prices. For example, this exquisite specimen. That's right, Wesker Two Point Blow has bootleg Bayonetta and the Hulk in the Iron Mask on his team. But perhaps scariest of all, Zombie Kathy. The wonderful thing about my products is that they know the difference between ally and enemy. That's right, Little Wesker Jr. has created B.O.W.s that he can control. What a twist. Oh wait, that's not a twist at all because that's exactly what they're doing in the CG movie before this one, Damnation. In Damnation, they're using the Lost Plaga Parasite to control B.O.W.s, but in Vendetta, Ares is using different viruses. One strain basically being an antivirus and a marker to tell the creatures that they're cool so they'll not attack them. Leon is cool. Leon's not that cool. Anyway, Arius says he knows it'd only take a minute or so of watching further to make sure Chris dies here, but he's an idiot, so he leaves. And then somehow misses all the explosions caused by the only competent members of Chris's team, who were all left on the chopper for some reason. <laughs> Damn, I'll never remember you, Kathy. Next, we have a flashback to Arius's good time super fun wedding where nothing at all went wrong, which is why he's such a happy-go-lucky guy in the present. Yeah, drop the bomb. Just drop the bomb. Wow, the one guy they wanted to kill with that oversized bomb is the one who survived. They really suck at this, I guess. You managed to kill just about everyone else, but like a poor marksman, you keep 
missing the target. Aries's BFF Diego and his daughter Maria also survived this real stinker bomb of a wedding gift, but they both needed some virus enhancements afterwards. So Diego turned into a tyrant-like creature, and Maria turned into someone who likes having to taper boobs to her outfit so they don't fall out. So bootleg Wesker may have lost his wife, but at least she was still able to give him a hand. <laughs> Glad we got back-to-back -back screaming at the sky scenes. If only these two realized all they had in common. The movie doesn't explain this very well, but Arius was a CIA agent who was tasked with infiltrating the B.O.W. black market. However, he was like, hey, I'm making mad crypto buying and selling zombies, and just like NFTs, the B.O.W. market is gonna be around forever. <laughs> so Arius made his fake job, his real job, and the CIA didn't take the breakup very well. Now, over in a Chicago research facility, we catch up with Rebecca Chambers, who's changed her major from STARS agent to head scientist. After all, Rebecca was an average fighter, but a brilliant scientist. At least she is now, apparently. Is that the virus that's making everyone flip out? Yes. Well, don't take it too seriously. This new virus created by Arius Co. is the A virus, which stands for Animality Virus. Yes, really. Animality Virus, Professor. A virus, for short. It's my animality. Pretty cool, huh? Leon is cool. This first strain virus is supposed to lay dormant until Arius or whoever uses the second strain A virus type to actually activate it, which causes instant zombies. However, as Wish.com Wesker isn't all he's cracked up to be, some people have just been randomly activating. Caramel macchiato. Did you remember the chocolate chips? And the whipped cream on top. Good boy. At least Rebecca's got her priorities straight. Actually, Rebecca can afford to slack off, as in one of the most proactive moves in the entire series, she's already in the middle of creating an antivirus to the A-virus. Rebecca sends Mr. Macchiato off to get some bodies for some antivirus testing. And after singing a song about living forever, he gets snuck up on by a woman in giant stiletto boots because if there's anything that this outfit says, it's stealth missions. Anyway, Miss Stealth Leto releases the activator virus into the lab as that one is able to be done airborne. This instant zombies everyone except Rebecca as she figures she might as well test her antivirus on herself at this point. I'll never forget how you got me my chocolate chips. You didn't die in vain. Rebecca is then forced to fire extinguisher Aaron Macchiato. Why? Why now? It's like it was planned. I don't think this place being cast with a virus was an accident at all! Rebecca having to escape the zombies in the lab is another part where they focus on the spooky horror vibe, but it also doesn't last very long. And unfortunately, is the last real scene of the movie to have this type of atmosphere. Rebecca. Chris? You alright? It's been a while. It's been a while! <laughs> Shouldn't I be in quarantine? Quarantine takes too long. I need you now. Carefree Chris is what they call me now, Rebecca. This is why I always lead such successful missions, like the one at the mansion in Mexico. After getting Mr. Chocolate Chips' blood off her, Rebecca dresses in a very similar outfit to her old star's gear. The faster we get this mass produced, the more lives we can save. Yeah, maybe. That just really doesn't sound very fun, Rebecca. I don't want to do that. A man named Glenn Arias. Who's that? Well, let me just put a pair of sunglasses on him here. Oh, another one of those. The sequence is extremely close to the parasitic weapons used by the Los Illuminados cult. Ah, great. The cult from RE4. Guess that means we gotta get stupid Leon in on the plot. I can't believe you can read a book at a time like this. 
Yeah, imagine doing something casual while trying to wipe out this virus, Miss Macchiato, with chocolate chips. You switched from special ops to science geek? Man, the BSAA is chock full of people with weird resumes. Bet you were pretty brainy to start with. I want to find a cure, same as Chris. The difference is, he uses his brawn. While I use my brain. Me, Chris, use brain all time! How dare Rebecca! Brains and bronze working together to save humanity. What do you think your chances are? Damien, unlike his build, his character is quite sarcastic. Yeah, that Damien does not have a sarcastic build at all for a man so sarcastic! The assholes we're after, they treat life and death like they shooting crap. Mm -hmm. I just realized DC and Damien are talking about Breaking Bad for once. Don't go there, Chris. Yo, that shit's ahead of its time! I'm glad Breaking Bad still happened within the Resident Evil universe. Do you think in their version any zombies tried to get some blue meth from Walter White? Careful you don't scare the locals. Your stealth's for shit. Go put on some stiletto boots, then you'll be super stealthy! Somehow. It's a little early to be that deep in the bottle, Leon. Well, look who it is. The BSAA's golden boy and Dr. High Hopes. Leon is cool. Pretty cool, huh? Let's talk about Los Illuminados. That's so long ago, I don't remember. Oh, come on, Leon. A remake of that just came out, so you should be nice and refreshed. What do you want? Redfield. Leon is being all out the edge right now because during a mission he lost his entire team. Imagine having that happen, right, Chris? Meow 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 meow. I guess Leon should take a page out of the Chris playbook and just not worry about it. She stays alive. Finish the rest. Call me that. Copy that. It's like I'm stuck in a damn loop. Tell me about it. Who's just at another spooky mansion? Shut up, Chris! You're acting like a couple of selfish brats right now. Resident Brats! The virus is lying dormant inside of everyone, even you. So it turns out that Ares' type 1 virus that lied dormant until he activates it had been put into the drinking water that comes from the Great Lakes. So, I really don't think everyone has that in their system, Rebecca, as that seems a bit specific. <laughs> Ooh, Stealth Leto strikes again. Seriously, I love that she's able to sneak up on Rebecca on a bathroom floor in those. Maybe that's her magic virus power. The snitchy informant that ratted out Leon and his team on his last mission somehow shows up too, because I guess this is another bar where everybody knows where you are. And he's just in time too for Diego's bootleg nemesis routine, which brings the house down. <laughs> Leon never saves his stupid family. There's no vacation. Leon is cool. Now, in an odd twist, it turns out that Ares' dead wife looked exactly like a blonde version of Rebecca. I guess bootlegs attract bootlegs, right? Anyway, this meant Arius thought kidnapping Rebecca and putting her in a weird recreation of his wedding, complete with flower petals constantly falling from the ceiling, would be a surefire way to get Rebecca to agree to be his silver medal. I'm redoing the wedding. This time, with you. Oh, okay, sure. Rebecca, meet Sarah. Might be losing her a bit here on the proposal, Arius. Big slapality. I'm going to replace your arm with Sarah's. Maybe that will change your mind about me. Yeah, sure. If he gave me his wife, Sarah, I'd probably love him too. His hideout in New York. Arius has a giant building in the middle of New York, and the CIA never found him again after crashing his wedding? You're planning another attack. No, I spent all this time on these stupid viruses not to use them. Mr. Subtlety then sends his trucks out and starts gassing everyone with the activator virus, which makes Leon and Chris have to go on a little side mission blowing up all of the trucks. 
idiot! Oh no! Not Damien! Now we'll never find out what he thought of Better Call Saul! R.I.P. Damien! He watched Breaking Bad! And this is really when the movie turns into action set piece after action set piece. But to give Leon and Chris a timer, Wesker Wannabe has somehow made an even cooler animality virus! Pretty cool, huh? Which he uses to infect Rebecca AGAIN! But it's super slow, unlike everyone else who gets insta-turned into zombies. It should start working in half an hour. Arius is gonna marry a zombie? I guess whatever floats your boat. Stealth Leto then kinda randomly gets taken out by one of the tanker trucks blowing up. Why? Cause they decided to keep her alive for a twist at the end, like that's a big deal that anyone really cares about. That's really what they end the movie with. I don't know. You can stick around for oh, another 20 minutes here to meet the new and improved Rebecca. I love that Chris sets his timer for 20 minutes and we act like this is a precise time frame in which he has to cure Rebecca before she's a super wedding zombie or whatever. Time for a whole long scene of silly dodging and shooting zombies! Really, this just goes beyond the point of caring. I know Leon and Chris are supposed to be super elite agents at this point, but you should still make zombies feel a little threatening. And when you have them pulling out all this ridiculous constant dodging crap, it makes the twits at the beginning look even dumber for dying to zombies. Of note though, Chris hits a DDT on one of the zombies and wins the Zombie World Championship. Ow! Oh, the Edge! Chris stumbles into a boss fight trying to save Rebecca, but it turns out Diego Phase 1 is a pushover and only takes one incendiary grenade to take out. Now time for the stupidest and most amazing scene in the movie. The gun foo shit. <laughs> I just can't even with them running in a circle around each other shooting at the ground. That's just some amazingly silly shit. Mwah or something. They have to be trying not to hit each other during all this. There's just no way. Damn, he ain't gonna be in Resident Evil Vendetta 2. Somehow, Eridos survives this fall long enough to merge with Diego to become a super tyrant. <laughs> oh, good grief. Ariago has a nice obvious target with his glowing heart, so when Leon comes in to save Chris, naturally he shoots at just about everything besides the spot he should. No, I could just throw you off the building and kill you, Leon, but I won't for some reason. Ah, uh, that just killed how many innocent people? And they're supposed to be the good guys? So while Leon is being an idiot, Chris gets the cure, saves Rebecca, and also manages to have a clue and shoots the glowing heart with a rocket launcher. Because that's always how you have to finish off a tyrant. That's Resident Evil 101 there. They are then able to easily sprinkle a cure over the rest of New York, so I don't know why curing Rebecca was on such a tight time frame. Though, I guess she was super infected, whatever that means. When I was a kid, I never thought my life would turn out this way. See, it all came full circle, cause now Leon is Happy about it? Maybe. We got the bad guys. Hope we made the world a little safer. We won. 
Hey, Chris. Yeah? Yeah? How much longer can we keep going on like this? I never make plans that far ahead. For all I know, I'll have a completely different face in a couple of years. Resident Evil Vendetta is a pretty mixed experience like all the CG movies have been. Overall, I liked it alright. But it's kind of annoying when they act like they're going to do more of an actual survival horror feeling story just to throw it away and do absolutely over-the-top silly action crap. When I was a kid, I never thought my life would turn out this way. I mean, it's true. I didn't. Now, if you'll excuse me, I need to go run in a circle and shoot at the ground.